Hello beautiful people and uh, welcome to my YouTube tutorial and in this section I'm going to be discussing pharmacology and uh, today's objectives we have uh, the definition of pharmacology, uh, the general principles of pharmacology, under this we shall look at uh, a drug, an agonist, an antagonist, receptors and the types of receptors, uh, toxins and also um, poisons. Then in our, in, in our third objective we shall look at the properties uh, of a drug to interact with a receptor. Under this, we shall look at the drug size, the drug reactivity and drug receptor bonds, the drug shape, then the uh, drug design, and then lastly, uh, we shall look at the, the nature of the drug. So therefore, to begin with the definition of pharmacology, so pharmacology is the study of substances that interact with living systems through chemical processes. And by this, they do this by binding to regulatory molecules, which can be receptors, enzymes. So when they bind to these regulatory molecules, they elicit what we call the activate or, in, uh, or inhibit these uh, uh, molecules, hence eliciting uh, or eliciting a desired function, uh, effect or inhibiting a body process. So therefore, uh, basically pharmacology is basically studying of these substances and these substances can be drugs as you can see here in the second object objective a drug so it's a substance that when it binds to a biological uh, regulatory system it inhibits or activates uh, a body process and uh, drugs can be either agonist or antagonist an agonist is a drug that binds to a receptor and elicits, it gives a desired effect so it gives a response through changing the biological system so, um, and an antagonist is a drug that binds the receptor and inhibits a body process. So, a good example of an uh, agonist, if I say insulin is an agonist at its receptors, whereas when you take a drug that inhibits insulin, it's going to stop the, the effect of uh, insulin on its receptors. So, that, that, that's how an agonist and antagonist work. Then we shall look at uh, receptors. So in this chapter, I'm just going to briefly uh, look at the receptors, but uh, in the next chapters, we shall discuss them more and more because uh, you, you can't discuss a drug without looking at uh, where it's going to bind. So receptors are also uh, biological uh, proteins that uh, regulate body functions. So when an agonist binds on a receptor, it elicits the function. When a an antagonist binds on a receptor, it stops the a, a, a body uh, function of body system to work. So we have types of receptors. We have ion gated uh, old organ receptors, and also that we, we have what we call the G protein coupled receptors. So this is now this is it for receptors as for now we shall discuss them more in the coming chapters then uh let's go to the toxins uh toxins are uh, these are uh, biological poisons biological poison produced by animals and we have uh, examples of toxins produced by the clostridium clostridium uh, bacteria for example, uh, we have Clostridium, uh, difficult Clostridium tetani. This produces toxins which are harmful to our body. We have uh, the snake poison. There also can be snake toxins uh, also uh, under the, that type. Then lastly, the poisons uh, are any, is any substances that extremely harms our body. And uh, there's a saying that all drugs are poison, but in a given uh, doses. At, in low doses so uh, another there's an, another function of a, a drug that uh, I, I I had remembered to talk about anyway uh, when I remember it I'll bring it forth uh, so let's go straight to the third property of a drug so these are so uh, under the properties of a drug to interact with the receptor we have a, a number of factors that we are going to look at today and the first one will be the drug size so how does the drug size affect uh, the binding of a drug to a receptor? So we have uh, drugs from the lowest from the lowest uh, molecular weight of seven, which is lithium, to the molecular weight of seven, 
to a drug that has a very big molecular weight, uh, which is uh, the T pairs uh, the RT pairs. It has a molecular weight of 59050 molecular weight units. So usually when a drug has a very big molecular weight, it's very hard for it to bind on a, a given number of receptors or its binding ability is extremely low. So drugs with a, a molecular weight of less than 100 molecular weight units, molecular weights have a good binding and specificity on receptors than uh, the, the, the large molecular weight drugs. So ATPase is an enzyme that uh, is used in a, a clotting. So usually we give it uh, straight to the site of action. So these drugs that are, have a very big molecular weight, usually it, uh, it's very hard for them to find their way through the compartments of the cells. So what do we do? We give them uh, intra, we give them IV, intravenous, or we give them intra arterial. So uh, we either give them as IA or IV, so that they go straight to their site of action. So if the clotting is in the vein, we shall straightly inject this drug to that site in the vein where the, the, the clotting is. Um, so therefore, uh, that's it for the drug size. And uh, if we look at the drug reactivity and the drug receptor bonds, so uh, under this, we have three types of bonds in which drugs work. The first one is a covalent. The second one is the electrostatic. Electrostatic. Under this, we have so many others. The hydrogen bond. We have uh, the van der Waals. Then lastly, we have the hydrophobic. So, uh, when a drug binds to a receptor, usually uh, under covalent, the bond is usually irreversible. So covalent, a covalent bond is a very strong bond in biological systems. And uh, we, we have a couple of drugs that bind to uh, receptors and elicit this type of bond. So one of the drugs is aspirin. So when aspirin binds to uh, when aspirin binds to the enzyme called cyclooxygenase, or COX, it acetylates this enzyme and it forms an irreversible bond. So this bond in uh, denatures this enzyme and it takes several days for this enzyme. To to be uh, uh, produced by the body. So therefore, aspirin uses that type of mechanism uh, to prevent uh, clotting in uh, platelet cells. And another example of a, uh, a drug that has the same uh, mechanism action is omeprazole. Uh, omeprazole is a uh, Prolisec, in, in the brand of Prolisec. So omeprazole, what it does, it inhibits the enzyme, uh, hydrogen, potassium, atipase. So this enzyme is uh, is responsible for, for, this enzyme is responsible for production of more hydrogen ions in the stomach. Hence, uh, when you have so much acid in the stomach, it's going to, uh, corrode the stomach walls and you get what we call peptic ulcers or um, G GAD peptic ulcers or GAD so we give this drug for this uh, condition because it inhibits this enzyme so it takes days for this enzyme to be produced back by the body and then the last example under this we, we, we is a, a very common uh, drug used in wars, uh, the saline. So saline and other um, nerve gases uh, inhibit an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. So this enzyme is responsible for uh, breaking down 
acetylcholine in the nerves so that uh, they, they don't produce, uh, produce an action potential in the following nerve. So what really happens is that when you inhibit the enzyme, you're going to increase the concentration of acetylcholine at the synaptic, uh, synaptic cleft and it's going to, in, to, do, to increase, it's going to increase the concentration of acetylcholine and leads to hyper, uh, hyperpolarization of the nearby uh, neuron. So these drugs usually are, are very dangerous, the ones that inhibit uh, uh, acetylcholine esterase. So if you delay, uh, the covalent bond goes on strengthening and it reaches a point what we call uh, edging. So when the, edge, uh, the process of edging reaches, then uh, it's really irreversible for you to, uh, to save that enzyme. So and it, and it takes a couple of days for this enzyme to be produced back by the body. So basically that's it for uh, drug reactivity and drug receptor bonding under covalent. So for the electrostatic bonds, we have uh, hydrogen and Van der Waal forces. So most of the drugs work with the, this type of mechanism, whereby they are uh, they they either have they either have a, a charge, either positive or negative charge on the structure, which uh, binds or which corresponds to the a, a given portal on the receptor. So many drugs work with this type of mechanism, whereby uh, if uh, the drug has a positive and negative portal. The receptor has a negative and positive photo in this form. They will bond together and then the drug elicits a given function. Then lastly is the hydrophobic type of bonding. So this type of bonding is usually seen in, a, in lipophilic drugs. So when these drugs reach the cell membrane, you know the cell membrane has a, a lot of uh, lipophilic, uh, it has a hydrophobic portions. So the, it helps, it aids this uh, drug these lipophilic drugs to cross the uh, cell membrane and also it helps them to cross what we call the blood brain barriers and, 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 and other barriers in the body. So, lipophilic bonds are important with the uh, lipophilic drugs, it helps them to cross barriers. So, basically, that's it for uh, this portion. So, when we drop down to the drug shape, um, so under this we have a local key and uh, chirality. So under lock and key is all about compart compartment, being compartment. When a drug shape is compartment with the uh, re receptor, they bind together just like the lock and key, and the drug elicits a given function. So this kind of it for the shape. And then for, for the clarity, this is a very big topic, and uh, I'll put more emphasis on this uh, on this concept because it's it's very so common in uh, in pharmacy and uh, we di uh, we discuss it more further in organic chemistry. So under chirality we have what we call enantiomers. So most of the drugs exist as uh, in, in enantiomers. They, they have both R and S enantiomers, and our receptors in the bodies are very specific uh, specific as far as enantiomers are concerned. If a receptor gives a positive response to the R enantiomer, then the S enantiomer does not have any uh, will not have any response to that type of receptor. So therefore drugs exhibit killer drugs with chiral centers or with receptors with chiral centers will respond more with drugs with a specific uh, uh, enantiomer. Like for example, uh, a drug uh, called ephedrine. Ephedrine uh, has this structure. So this is the structure of ephedrine. So ephedrine has two chiral centers. It has this chiral center and that chiral center. So therefore, it will form four diastereo isomers so out of the four diastereo isomers one of the stereo isomer is uh, the most potent and it will only bind to a uh, um, beta receptors and give uh, a response well as the others are not so that's how a uh, clarity is more important in another example under this other clarity we have a drug called cabidiol Cavidiol is a drug we use uh, in a, it's a, a beta blocker, so we use it in hypertension, and um, it has a structure.
So Kaveda has a, a structure that looks similar like this. And uh, this is the chiral center. It has one chiral center. So it has both R and S enantiomers or stereoisomers. So um, the S enantiomer has very good beta blocking properties, well as the R enantiomer has a very good uh, alpha receptor blocking properties. So this uh, this this shows you how uh, our receptors are very specific as far as enantiomers are concerned. So we, we shall meet more more of the compounds with the uh, chiral centers in uh, uh, pharmacology as we go on. Um, so second, uh, lastly but not least, uh, we have the drug design. So under drug design, basically what we look at is a uh, uh, long time ago, we, we used to have what we call the try and error, whereby uh, pharmacologists used, uh, used to discover drugs through how uh, they reacted with the body systems or how side, which types of side effects they, they, they produce. Well, as with today's technology, it's very easy for us to determine what type of drug will bind to this type of receptor. Since now we have uh, the monography of our receptors, we know uh, their structures, their shape, and how they uh, and, and what type of drug designs can we make to elicit a given function on such receptors. So basically, other drug design is all about uh, advancement from uh, the trial and error to today's technology. Then lastly, the nature of the, uh, of the drug, physical nature of the drug, Usually drugs will exist as solids, liquids, and gases, and this uh, affects their bioavailability. So if you have a drug in gaseous form, this drug will uh, diffuse very fast in, uh, in the blood. It will have 100% bioavailability, and it elicits a very uh, fast response uh, because it will reach receptors very fast compared to solids and liquids. So liquids are second in line. They, they have a higher absorption than solids. And under this, we have examples of solid uh, drugs that exist as solids. We have aspirin and atropine. Liquids, we have um, uh, nicotine. Then drugs in gaseous form, we have the nitrous oxide. So basically today, that's all for my uh, first pharmacology uh, introduction topic. So tune in more for uh, the following chapters to come. Thank you very much.